Hi, I'm Charlie Nardozzi. And I'm Mary Engish, and you might hear us on All Things Gardening on Vermont Public. And we'd like to invite you to join us for a live stream video event at a homeowner's garden in Vermont. Join Charlie and Mary as they travel to Norwich, Vermont to meet Janet Flanders and tour the home garden she's been working on for over 50 years. Janet, nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you. Yeah. Great to see you. Uh, my goal over the years has always been to just have bloom the whole season. So over the years, there's been a blank spot. And it's like, okay, I have to find plants that mm -hmm. go there and will be blooming now. Right, right. And I think we can start right here in this yeah. garden. We might as well just dive right into your okay. gardens because you have so many of them. <laughs> um, and I guess you can't not notice this big... Flopsy, <laughs> is that the good word for well, it? I what call is it that? Dr. Zeus plant, but, <laughs> but it's a willow sunflower. A willow sunflower. And because of the leaves, yeah. it makes it a little easier to remember because okay. it does look willowy. Yeah, and that'll have a flower, obviously. It will on have it. little daisies on the top, yeah. which look very bizarre, but, <laughs> but it does bloom and it, it is attractive once it's got all the lovely gold yellow on top. Yes, and is that grown from seed? I mean, or is it a perennial? It's a perennial. It's a perennial, comes yep. back year after year. Every year. And what's really great about this property, really unique about this property, is that uh, Janet's been here for 53 years? Yes. Yeah, and 53 years, she has planted literally everything that's here. Everything that's here, uh, and the trees, the shrubs, the Everything. perennials, probably many iterations of perennials. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, also, she's leaving. This is kind of her last hurrah. This is my last hurrah, yes. Yeah, my... so we thought it would be a great way to pay tribute to all the great things you've done here in Norwich and all these flowers you've grown. Well, my grandfather lived in the house across the meadow, some uh -huh. side, and gave us this land when we arrived fresh out of college with no money. Huh? <laughs> and to be in Norwich, given land was a real gift. So yeah. we didn't have to commute or anything. We had jobs and could live right here and build a house. Uh -huh. And there was nothing here. This was a horse meadow, essentially. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and I started with a vegetable garden. Uh -huh. And then the deer were a problem. So I will see them later. I have what's called enforcers. They're attached to the hose. <laughs> <laughs> That's they, a kind way of they saying They scare the deer with water. Yeah, and right, right. The woodchucks, unfortunately, didn't care. So within about five years, I'd come home midday to pick beans or raspberries, and the woodchucks would just be mowing Mow the whole place down. down. Yeah. So that made me start a little flower garden and then make another little flower garden, and eventually I connected them, and then I just kept going. Nice, so there was no big master plan, no, per se. No, I wish there had been. I would now, now that I know what I'm doing, I'd like to lift it all up and start <laughs> over. <laughs> well, let's go over. You have some nice examples of different kinds of gardens you can have, and the one over here is a shade garden underneath a nice crab apple tree. Yes. And as we're going by here, I just wanted to point out this uh, flower on our left. And uh, what is that one? That's a boltonia. A boltonia. And okay. there are plants that you can cut back mid-June to make them fatter and shorter. Mm -hmm. But look it up first, because if you cut something back that doesn't want to be cut back, that's it. It's over, <laughs> and you're very unhappy. <laughs> so that's much shorter than it would be by about two feet. Exactly. So under here, you have some beautiful shade garden plants. And Maybe talk to us a little bit about the plant selection in here and, and what things have worked and what things maybe weren't the best choices. Um, I think I've got this garden down pretty well in terms of uh, what will and will not grow here. Hostas, if you can get hostas that have yellow or white in them, mm -hmm. it just will make everything look lighter and brighter. Yeah. Otherwise, they just don't show. Oh, mm. okay. And so it's just green. And who, you know, you don't want a garden that's just green. Mm hmm um, the double bloodroot, there's two huge batches here. They don't look like anything now, but in the spring, one of the earliest bloomers, they look like little peonies. Mm. Uh, and they're masses of them. And the yeah. leaves are tightly wound around the flower. And mm -hmm. once they open, that's what these big fat leaves are right. now. And I see you popped in a few caladiums. Those are those plants yes. over here that have a little color on their leaves. And my goal, of course, was to make a real show, but because of the cooler weather, which I don't mind, 
and so much rain, they're tropical and they're not making a big show yet because it's just been too cold. Yeah, too cold, too wet for them. And that's something you have to pull up in the fall if you want to keep them. If you want to keep them, but I have no place to keep them. Oh. I don't have a cellar. Oh, I see. And I don't have a heated garage or uh -huh. anything, so they, they can't freeze. I just buy them every year. And last year they were up much faster. Oh, okay. So it's just... It all depends on the year. It's an and, experiment. And getting right. them growing, yeah. Nice. So you also pop in a few annuals just to add a little more color, like this uh, little begonia you little have begonia, over here. begonia, right, because I really love the white flowers. It's called Bossa Nova. Uh-huh. And it, uh, the first frost will wipe it out. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Takes care very of that for you. Yes, yeah, very sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is really a nice way to show the different textures, different colored leaves um, in a, a shade garden, and it looks really nice in here. I'm sure at different times of year you have different things blooming. Right, and... Yeah. and this is really a spring garden, particularly when the clematis is out. Mm. And annuals are great for fillers because once a perennial is bloomed, some look good forever. Yeah. And others brown up and really don't look very nice. And if uh -huh. you can plant something in front of it, it kind of takes your eye away from exactly. the, the, the very unhappy brown. Right, right. <laughs> Nice. Well, let's take a look at some of the other gardens you have here. We'll kind of wander around the, the back of your house and see what you have over here. What are your favorite plants and what are your biggest mistakes with them? <laughs> <laughs> well, the biggest mistakes are not looking up a plant to find out where it really would be happy growing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because you decide, okay, I want that plant here. It would really look nice and uh -huh. you put it there and it just looks miserable. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, so I've learned by the second year, if it's not looking like it's going to be happy, you have to move it. <laughs> you yeah. just have to move it. Right, right, right. And, and things happen also too. that you, you don't get a choice on. Mm. See how tall these rudbeckias are? Yeah. And these are shorter. They're exactly oh, yeah. the same. Uh huh. I came out one day earlier in June and they had been completely yeah. skeletonized, oh. this section. Wow, and yeah. I caught it quickly, so they've rebounded. Yeah. But, I mean. <laughs> they dwarf the plants they, for they, you. <laughs> exactly. The plant had to put so much energy in getting more leaves right. that it couldn't. So something was eating these? Yeah, some, I okay. think a caterpillar of some sort, yeah, so, which yeah. okay. only needed a couple of days and then probably right. is somewhere down there to come back yeah, next year. Yeah, they went into their pupil form uh, or whatever. Their, yeah. yeah. But this is quite stunning, the way you have this mm. trellis here, and then you have the flowers just up against it. Well, the rain comes off the roof, uh -huh. and so especially this year, it'll just take everything down with it. Mm. It'll oh, be lying down, right, right. so I sure. have this trellis made so that it can hold everybody Kind of keep everybody vertical, right. yeah. <laughs> and, and this tree that you have here is kind of an interesting story. Can you tell us a little well, bit about it? This is called a tamarix. It is related to a tamarack. It is? Oh, and really? Huh. It's very brittle and needs to be in a dry place. It's very happy in Colorado. It's considered a junk tree really there because it yeah. kind of takes over. It's had a hard time with all this rain. You shouldn't see all this light. It should just be full of green. Yeah. And it is starting to turn pink down here. Oh, right, look at this. And huh. when it is in full bloom, which usually by this time of year it is, but not yet because of rain and no sun, if you stand under it, it's just like, the bees are so happy. Mm. Oh, they, they really like it. It's a great they pollinator it. tree, yes. huh? Yeah, it's and it, it will pink up. I think it's really trying on the top where it gets mm -hmm. more sun. Yeah. And it will be nice. <laughs> well, my eye caught this uh, arch you have over here. Yes. And the beautiful plant, the vine that you have growing up there. And uh, maybe you could tell us what that is. It's a porcelain vine. Porcelain mm -hmm. vine. Ampelopsis, okay. real name. And wow, I really like it because of the variation and the pink stems, yeah. which are very unusual. Yeah, really. And it comes from the ground every year. Uh-huh. So you think it's dead, and yeah. eventually it does come up. Uh-huh. Now, does it flower as well? Oh, it yeah, it does. I can very, see. It yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Some little flowers. The bees well. like it, but like here's one. Yeah. But it, it's not showy. That, it, that's it's really for the, it the vine and the, the, vine. the variegated yeah. leaf. And to get something going up so it isn't so plain. Right, and that's a, that's a great tip, you know, having something here, especially because you have this big wall of your shed behind it. You want to have something that's going to kind of pull cover it all together it. and cover exactly. it. And so everything else, and I think you mentioned to me, so you can plant things underneath it too. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and the clematis is finished, but when it was in bloom, it was a deep mm. blue with red maroon mm. edging. And 
Just yeah. together, it was. It makes a big show. We'll see some other ones here in your yeah. property, but I love these seed pods. Yeah. That's probably one of the, the big calling cards for clematis. So let's go take a look at this island bed you have okay. back here. You still have some lilies blooming. Look at that. We're trying. I mean, everything is kind of late this year, so usually right. by now, I would guess lilies would have been long gone. Huh? Well, these are late, later blooming, so that they're they're almost when they should be. Yeah. I, I lost a lot of the big, tall oriental lilies from the frost that we had. Oh, in okay. Yeah. So they'll be back next year, but they just said, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> 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 but what's really uh, beautiful about this garden is you have the cochiana, you have the lilies, uh, you have a number of plants, but you also have brought in some goldenrod, which kind of reflects the meadow around you. Yes, and there are some wonderful varieties of goldenrod now that have been hybridized, mm -hmm. and one's called fireworks, and unfortunately it's not in bloom today, but it looks like fireworks. It looks and like so fireworks, it's yeah. it's really nice to come out and see it Right, giving exploding, you a exploding, so to speak. Exploding, exactly, because <laughs> yeah. it really looks like that. Uh -huh. uh, there's a little crocosmia left in the back. Oh, the, the bright red, red flower, the bright red, the little yeah. ones. Yeah, okay. They're, they look like they belong in Hawaii. <laughs> and the Angelica purpurea is in the back, the lavender umbrals. It's yeah. a lovely plant, reseeds, and so I just dig it up wherever it's put itself and put it back. And put it back where you want it. I, I noticed the, the bees seem to really like they it, too. They love it. They love it. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice pollinator plant. Is that something you try to incorporate, plants that are good for pollinators? I do. I will certainly plant something that I love, whether or not it's going to attract bees. But I have worked for hummingbirds and bees yeah. to make sure that there is something for them. Uh huh. And it, I've often been picking raspberries in a red jumpsuit and the hummingbirds think I'm a big flower <laughs> and they come towards me and it's like, oh no, that's not right and off they go. She doesn't have food. <laughs> no, oops, big mistake. <laughs> well, impersonating a flower, that's a, yeah. that's a first, right? Well, let's continue on our tour. Oh, this this contraption, I think, oh, is what yes. you were going to show us. Oh, yes. Now, get out of the way. Oh. <laughs> oh. This okay, is, I'm getting this out is, of the way. <laughs> this is an enforcer. This is the enforcer. <laughs> so this is for the deer. And turn it on. Right. This is a deer. Now watch. It won't go off because I want it to. Mm. Maybe you have to run in front of it. Uh oh Oh, don't do that. <gasps> ah, it's a motion-sensitive uh -oh. sprinkler I'll that's here for the deer. <laughs> Maybe you don't oh, look yeah. like a deer. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why it's only doing it. It may have trouble with the battery, so. Okay. Um, but you have them all around your property? I have six because yeah. you can't garden here with deer. Right. Uh, it's impossible. And this really keeps them away. It does. I thought I was either going to have a nervous breakdown or quit. <laughs> and I put these I'm in. I'm glad you didn't and either. <laughs> yeah, it seems to work. It does work. Well, this is late in the season, but you still have some beautiful, a couple examples of beautiful daylilies. Uh, look and at this, this yellow this and burgundy beauty. colored one over here. And it is just gorgeous. There. And the yeah. burgundy colored one over there. Do you remember the names of any of these? No, I'm sorry, but uh, I do get them from Shriners. Shriners, the they, Irish people. The Irish people, and yeah. they just have gorgeous daylilies. Uh -huh. mm. They also have reblooming, so there is a new... A new stem coming up here. Wow. Oh yeah, right, right. I can't right, remember right. all the ones because it's a fairly new bed. Um, which ones rebloom? But that's yeah. a really nice addition yeah. when you have daylilies you love and they're going to come back. Right, <laughs> exactly. Some of them. And that's a nice thing about these daylilies, especially these newer ones. They're they're not only beautiful, they're ruffled, and they're they're bigger flowers. Who, who could possibly even dream that up? It's yeah. so I know. gorgeous. I mean, so look great. at Mother Nature yeah. does. But also they rebloom. They they've bred them so that they keep blooming. Yeah. I have some new mm. ones too are like that. They're still blooming. They yeah. started in July, they're going through August. Mm. They just keep sending up flower stalks, which uh, is And this year I think great. probably more than normal because they get enough water. Usually right. it's drying out by mm -hmm. August and they're saying, oh, they I've don't like enough. it dry. No. Yeah, no. exactly. But you have um, this beautiful plant too. This is a, an annual that seeds itself. Mm -hmm. It's a euphorbia called Snow on the Mountain. And when it euphorbia. first comes up, and until about two weeks ago, or th mm -hmm. you know, maybe three weeks, but two weeks, I'm going to say, it's just green. And someone might say, well, why are you growing that green <laughs> plant? You know, <laughs> it's not, but then it does this beautiful white and it yeah. just adds light and air to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Now this year I have fewer than I'm used to. They, they had seeded themselves everywhere, yeah. but I think with all the water, they just couldn't take it. Oh, right. Euphorbias much. tend to be more of a dry yeah, yeah. soil plant. Now yeah. someone asked me what kind of were my favorite plants and I have a few new ones that I really like. And uh -huh. one is the Indigofera, 
which I got from Plant Delights. Uh -huh. You can see one little pink flower. Oh, on right, it. this one right in but here. But it's really yeah, a spring. Look at that. It's huh? a spring bloomer. Uh -huh. And it comes up from the ground. Here, you would chop it back, even though it gets a little woody, and let it re regenerate every year. Mm -hmm. And it just has very pretty foliage. Uh, the, it's a spring bloomer, and it, it's just a beautiful plant. Well, let's continue around, especially around to the front of the house, because that's a beautiful spot this time of year. Um, and you do have this magnificent magnolia on her way here as we're walking through. Which is about twice as tall as anybody else's magnolia. I'm not sure and why, but it's very You planted handy. this, I assume. I did, and I actually wow. planted it down on the other side uh -huh. and decided it was the wrong place. Yeah. And so I dug it up. It was my size. Yeah. Uh, Put wow. it here. Much happier here. Like <laughs> 50 years later, yeah. here we go. And it flowers, right? And it flowers. Magnolia. Oh, yes. oh yeah, it, this it, is a spring flower. You can see the buds, actually. Oh, early, yeah. early. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. A few years ago, there. we had a really early spring. It was mid-March. Wow. Oh, wow. So this actually blew, was in bloom, and just as the frost hit, it was finished. Uh -huh. wow. So it didn't have the leaves out yet, so it, it was okay. Some, some things really got zapped. Mm. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, you have some really fascinating plants in here. You're talking about travel, and um, yeah. this plant, this beautiful pink-flowered plant that's really tall is a hollyhock, right. but not your traditional hollyhock. No, it's a Turkish hollyhock. Turkish hollyhock. And it seeds itself. Yeah. It does not get rust, which your lovely oh, barnyard that's cool. Turkish. Well, it may, but it's not susceptible. So right, right. It would have to be a special, especially hard year for yeah. it to get that. Yeah. Um, you have to pull it out because it, does really seed easily. Right. Is it still a biennial like the other hollyhocks? Um, I don't believe so. Oh, so it, it seeds itself like I think a, it's a short-lived perennial. Short-lived perennial. Five, seven years and then... Right. So these plants... But because plants, it seeds, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Right. So you, you'll be cutting these plants down and then right. whatever Right. And I'll probably up, pull out a few to yeah, put them back open where it up a little bit. I really sure. Want them. But you can see it's loaded with flower yeah, buds. Yeah. Wow. And it's it's mostly finished now, but uh -huh. it was... Its peak was couple of weeks ago, really. Yeah, yeah. And here's an, another good example. I just noticed this looking down of this uh, plant support system. And this is kind of a, it, it's they were really, working nicely here. Yeah, they're a Leatrice and they were really okay. going to lie on the ground. And right. Especially with all this rain, they were going to rot. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Pick them up and put them in a ring. And then you can just adjust this by pulling it up yep. like that. Yep. Oh, that's kind of oh, yeah. cool. And pushing it back down. Huh, really cool. I like that system. And these guys are another one. It's a Japanese aster. Oh, the ones with the buds white, on them right little, here? Yep. Yeah. I cut that back at least a foot. Oh, you did? Because I've learned, I, this is the first year I did it, uh -huh. because they get tall and leggy and yeah. they just fall over. Oh, okay, nice. Well, you do have some things that's flowering right here, this white flower. Uh, this is an artemisia. An artemisia. A ghost plant is its other name. Ghost? It, it, it will be really? a little whiter, huh. but it, that's, pretty much what its flower does. And it's basically wow, just to add to the general soft atmosphere. Right, huh. right. Movement and, uh, yeah, texture. A ghost with the idea that it kind of floats it's around yes. and it's white, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It hasn't scared me yet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and this lovely plant oh, is, a, what is happened a type here? of meadow rue. Meadow rue. The Flipper. rain just comes down so hard. Yeah. It's never fallen over before. I mean, uh -huh. you can see the piece in the back. It's just a very tall, beautiful plant. Oh, wow. Look and at if I try to straighten it out, it'll break. And so oh, I see. So you're just letting it I flop over here. I have to here. let it. It's lying on top of the Asclepius, and I'm sorry about that oh, little plant, but well. <laughs> that's what and happens. And you got some little, little bee bombs in the, there that yeah. are trying to bloom. Yeah, this is a great, another and great bee plant. the bees love it. Yeah, and look at them all. the hummingbirds mm -hmm. love it too. Do they? They do. Oh, that's sweet. It's a nice color this time of year. You don't often see this no, kind of deep it's, purple, it's, um, beautiful color. It's hard to get away from pink and white. <laughs> yes, it is hard. You've done a good job though. We had mentioned earlier about the clematis and the small flowered versions, and you have one in the back yes, over here. Yes, this one it's a is nice Betty example. Corning. And Betty Corning, These okay. are later blooms so the the original when it first comes out in june i mean it's been blooming a long time mm. they're mm. about double that size oh, oh. so okay. they're quite big bells yeah um and it holds for a long time compared to the beautiful big ones the big one henry eye 
doesn't huh. bloom very well, and I'm wondering if I oh. have, it may need a little more sun. Yeah, yeah the crab But apple. Uh, it doesn't shade it that much because the sun comes from there, but uh -huh. still, it's, it's never made what I would call a show. Yeah. And that's what I want. That's what you want. I have right. a white spring bloomer, uh -huh. and it does lots and lots, and mm. I don't know the name because I thought it was Guernsey cream, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> and nobody, it's hard to keep track of I the names. I look at all the white uh, clematis, and I also have one I use as a screensaver that's uh -huh. a multi-layered. Nobody knows what it is, and I know I didn't <laughs> order it because when it bloomed, I said, oh, I've never seen you before. Right. And I would remember that I wanted this special thing. Yeah. Well, I notice the color sometimes will shift based on how much sun it's getting and how much shade it's Especially getting. Especially the deeper. light lavender ones yeah. that can mm. be white or lavender, and mm. they do better in cooler weather. Right, and the weather temperature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have a really cool plant over here. This is one of my favorites. These it's blooming are, right now. They're so nice to <laughs> Tell us about this plant. These guys are called licorice, spelled with a Y, L-Y, C-O-R-R-S. Magic lily, which is a very apt name because they come up in the spring with tulip-like strappy leather leaves, mm. and then the leaves disappear, and you forget that you have them. And then all of a sudden, within a day, they can grow a, a foot. The stem comes wow. up. And within about four or five days, you've got blooms, and they're just, they're just delicate and lovely. Yeah. It's magic. It is. It's, it's just magic. Like magic. That's why they're called magic lilies. And you just have the blooms, no foliage, just no the foliage stem, the all. blooms, and yeah. then they'll die back, and then you'll and you do it all over again next year. And they come back next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so sweet. And you have to remember they're there because if they're coming up and you step on them, that's it. Uh, they don't put up another right, stem. Right, so. right. This is a one-shot deal. So right. it's good to tuck them in somewhere where you're remember not going to be walking. Remember where they are, and you're not going to walk there mm -hmm. at that time of year. Yeah, <laughs> right. And remember, yeah, remember, late summer, don't walk in here. Yes. Put a little sign up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, you have a great story about this really tall plant here that the bees are still enjoying as yes, the sun is setting yes. here and the light level is going down. Uh, tell us about this one. So people always are surprised. That's an impatience. Oh. An impatience. Uh, uh, we think of impatience as that low a bedding little plant. Low thing, yeah. which I actually despise. But <laughs> anyway, sorry anybody who likes impatience. So Himalayan balsam is another name. Yeah. They're considered invasive because oh. they spit their seed. I don't know if up here I've got one that I can show. Okay. So if you get it in tight there on the seed. Um, They're kind of like jewel weed in that. Yes, here's one. So when I touch this. Oh, oh, they just spread their and seed. I touched it before it was ready, but if it was doing it on its own, it literally spits. Yeah. So wow. every spring, the first thing, starting around April 1st, I'm pulling up babies. Oh. And it's not a problem. They're real easy. Oh, they come right out. They come right out. So this is in the middle of my Baptisia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the Baptisia, the, this is the old-fashioned kind, it opens up in the middle and there's nothing there. Ah. So it blooms in June. Huh. And these guys start so early that they've gotten a good foothold by the time the baptisia's gotten large. Okay. And now you've got a flower where you wouldn't have one otherwise. Right. <laughs> but the color, mm. you don't know what color you're going to get. One year I had all coral, which is the color I want. Yeah. They don't come true to seed. And I'm not uh. sure what the coral one, there are some coral ones down the road. They're more shaded. Mm. So I'm not sure if it's temperature, water, what, what really is? determines it. But every single one in my garden this year is this color, which is my least favorite, uh -huh. only because it's too close to the green and doesn't add light. Right, right. There's a white one, a light pink one, and a coral. Coral, okay. And the coral is the one I really want, uh -huh. but I actually would accept the other two too before yeah. this one, but this is... <laughs> this is what you got. This is what I got. So if someone at home wanted to grow one of these, what would they look for in a catalog or... I don't know anybody who sells them. Uh, they're called Himalayan balsam? Himalayan balsam. Himalayan balsam. So where did you get them then? My guess is someone gave them to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nice. Which is surprising because, as I said, I, I'm not going to give them to anybody because they might be mad at me. Because uh, <laughs> literally you pull out thousands. <laughs> right. They spread all over the place. Wow. And then, of course, we have lots more flocks over yeah. here still blooming and, and some more Rudbeckias. And the flock smells so good and it's... Really nice uh, with oh, yeah. the enforcers that I have because the deer will come down the driveway and terrace the flocks. They really like flocks. Huh. And they will rebloom, but not if they come down again. Oh, okay. So you have a sprinkler somewhere hidden. I have a sprinkler <laughs> under the apple tree that can see oh, the driveway. Oh, it, co the dri it covers the they driveway. They started. I could see like four or five 
bite offs because yeah. they're rough. I wouldn't. I always cut with scissors so you don't have that roughness. Uh -huh. And they stop, so it must have gone off and scared oh, them. Oh, and scared them away. Yeah. Wow, good system. <laughs> <laughs> now, because really the year that made me realize I'm either going to quit gardening, cry, or both, <laughs> uh, they had just not just eaten them once, but twice. And, and yeah. you know, they can only come back so many times. Right, right, right. So That's we'd like to give you a vase of flowers. <laughs> Which you arranged yourself. Which, of course, you arranged, because <laughs> they're all your flowers. Yeah. There's a little Linaria left, and this is another plant that not everyone should have, because you cannot put it in your garden. It's false spirea. Oh. oh. And it, it has these little tapioca pearls, mm -hmm. yeah. and then they open, uh -huh. and it doesn't last, but you know, a couple of days from now, once they're all open, it starts to brown up pretty quickly. Right. But it's a... A bush that's woody and new growth both, and it just spreads like oh. crazy. So oh. I have it down near down, the meadow, down and, away. <laughs> and it, you yeah. mow up to it, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and it has these lovely flowers, which the bees right. adore, but yeah. Yeah, you keep the tame things close to the house exactly. and the wild things and, in the wild areas. Far away. Far away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this has been great. And uh, we really like to thank you, Janet, for You're walking welcome. us around. And thank you for watching All Things Gardening Live. I appreciate it. Um, this will live on the Vermont Public YouTube channel. And, of course, we'd like to thank Gardener Supply, too, for sponsoring us uh, to do this. And uh, if you have gardens that you might think would be good, uh, let us know. We'll probably be doing more of these either this year or next. Bye-bye. <laughs>